Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. Today it's another watch me work video and I'm doing a full set of acrylic nails. And 50 points will go to whoever actually picks up what mistake I made during this set. So first things first, I need to fit all 10 fingers with the correct tip size. Obviously this one is way too small and this one fits much better. Correct fit is when the tip reaches from sidewall to sidewall. With tips you're also better to choose one that is slightly bigger rather than to squish on one that is much smaller because it's easier to file away the bigger one than it is to squash on a smaller size tip. You run the risk of the tip actually popping off when it's too small. So now I'm attaching the tip to the nail with the nail glue. When placing the tip, I hold it to the nail further down away from the glue well at a 45 degree angle and slowly I slide the tip down the nail until the glue hits the natural nail. Once that happens, I flatten out the tip and start to slowly press it onto the nail so the glue gets pushed out onto the nail bed. If you apply the right amount of glue, then you won't get too much excess oozing out the top. So like I said earlier, it's always better to file a nail to size rather than squish on a smaller one and that's what I did right there. And here again I'm holding the tip at a 45 degree angle and pressing it onto the nail. Has anybody realised my mistake yet? Oh, where's my mind? That's right, I missed the most important part of any nail service application. I forgot to prep the nail. I was so eager and so excited to get filming for this tutorial that I completely, completely forgot to prep the nail. For all of you who noticed and were yelling at the screen, prep the nail, prep the nail, you all get 50 points. Not that the points are redeemable for anything at all, but you know, for bragging rights I suppose. Make sure you leave a comment down below to let me know how silly I was and you can redeem your bragging rights there. So now I'm going to cut the tips to the size that the client wants and in this instance the client doesn't want them too long at all. So I tell her to look at her hand from the underside to see how much the free edge is protruding from the fingertip. She obviously wanted it a little bit shorter so I cut some more off. Now I have to go through and make sure they're all the same. When using the tip cutters to shorten the nails, always make sure to support the free edge. This way it doesn't fling across the room when you snip it, plus it also feels more secure for the client when you're supporting it as you cut. And once I've finished trimming all the nails, I'm going to go back and shape them all. This client wanted a slightly tapered square shape. I always like to file my side walls first and I usually alternate from side to side up until my shape is even. Most of the times at this point I will file the free edge but most of the times I won't because I know the shape will change after I've put the acrylic on. But the side walls are more important because that's a lot more work to file when you've actually put the acrylic on. So the tips on these first three nails are stuck on without any prep done to the nail. And this ring finger as you can see has a whole bit which is actually still not attached to the nail. But I'll show you how to deal with that without taking the tip off completely and starting again. One by one I move through the nails filing away at the side walls and straightening up any free edge that I need to. And if the uh, glue has seeped onto the fingertip I make sure to peel it away from the nail just like that before I file into it. Because otherwise you run the risk of actually cutting the client's skin if you leave the glue attached as you start to file. Now I'm using my e-file with a fine sanding band to blend in that tip and prep the rest of the nail as well. I also like to use my sanding band to remove any cuticle that may be, that may be found on the nail plate. Now for this troublesome unattached tip. What you have to do is use your e-file to spot remove all the tip which is not attached to the natural nail. Do this very slowly because with the glue underneath and the friction from the e-file the nail plate can get really hot for the client. As I'm filing the tip away I realize that it's barely hanging on by a hair but this doesn't matter you only need the tip to achieve the length. So once the acrylic goes on the entire nail, that nail will be strong and it's not going anywhere. So again, this is the last nail that I did without prepping the nail. So I'm just filing away the tip and preparing the rest of the nail as well. So because this nail service started on the wrong foot and I didn't do my nail prep at the beginning, now I'm left to blend in that tip and do the nail prep all in one go. This isn't a serious problem, it's just disappointing that even after 20 years of doing nails I still make rookie mistakes like this. But you live and learn I suppose and don't let things like that get you down. You just onwards and upwards and go ahead with the service. 
So as you can see, the end result, even though I didn't do everything in the correct order, still looks pretty good. I'm showing you the bead size in comparison to the nail because on this nail I'm going to do the one ball application method. I'm also leaving this clip in real time. I haven't sped it up at all so you can see how long it takes me to do the one nail. So I started off by placing the tip close to the cuticle and then patting it into place where I need it to sit. My main concern with any acrylic application of mine is to get my cuticle area perfect. That means it needs to be the smoothest, the finest and the flattest part of the nail. When I say the flattest part of the nail, I'm referring to its transition from the acrylic angle down into the natural nail. It almost needs to be flawless from its transition from the apex down into the cuticle area. When your cuticle application is flawless, then you get minimal lifting, if any lifting at all. And once I'm happy with my cuticle application, then I can concentrate on the rest of the nail. The rest of the nail, I usually just pat it into place, brushing up and down and moving it into place as I need it. I also use the shine of the nail to show me where there's dips and grooves in the nail if I need to also go back and reapply acrylic. On the ring finger, I'm going to show you the three bead application method. With the three bead application method, you use smaller beads and break up the nail into three zones. The tip, the apex and the cuticle area. I'm starting in zone one with a small bead of acrylic which I flatten out across the surface of the tip. This bead only reaches up to the stress point of the nail and, and as an extra step I'm just smoothing back the acrylic that reaches up to this point to make the transition of the second bead easier when it comes over the first bead. The tip part of the nail needs to be thin enough so it looks natural but also thick enough that it doesn't break with the first thing that the client grabs incorrectly. This will vary from client to client because not all clients have the same use with their hands. Some clients are actually very rough with their hands and use their nails as tools. So you may need to do this part a little bit thicker than what you usually would have. So now moving on to the second bead, the apex bead of the nail. And it, this one needs to be the thickest part because this is where all the strength of the nail comes from. I place a bigger bead in zone 2 of the nail and I pat it from side wall to side wall. When I reach the part of the nail where it just comes to touch the side wall, I start to flatten out the acrylic and brush it over zone 1 part of the nail. And because I feathered my zone 1 bead back up into the cuticle and made it nice and flat, my transition of zone 2 bead is a lot smoother as it comes over the tip part of the nail. There's no rule that says you only have to brush your strokes downwards. Sometimes I like to brush backwards up towards the cuticle because I find I push too much product down towards the tip and I need it further back towards the nail. Again here I am flattening the back part of the bead so my transition of the cuticle bead is a lot smoother over the nail. Again with zone 3 I am very careful with how I apply my acrylic around the cuticle area. I push up the acrylic very close to the cuticle but not touching. If the acrylic touches the skin then it will most likely cause lifting. So you push it up so close to the skin where you're able to still flatten it and make that transition nice and smooth to the natural nail but not close enough that you end up touching the cuticle. Then the remainder of the bead you brush over the entire nail and you should have what is the perfect nail. If there are little dips and crevices in the nail you can always go back with extra acrylic and fill those in. If you remember with the ring finger how badly attached the tip was and the steps I took to fix that problem, you can actually see now how perfectly attached the acrylic is to the nail and that nail won't cause any problems for the client. Now I'm moving through all the nails using the one bead application method and once I've done that step I'm going to clean my brush thoroughly from all the acrylic. To do that I just dip it into my monomer and then brush it onto my paper towel a couple of times up until I'm satisfied there's no acrylic left in it. Now it's time for the final shaping of the nail. I'm using an 80 grit file to file the side walls and the tip area of the nail. When filing the nails though, I've noticed that the point of view is different for me and different for the client. So to see how the client would see their nails, I turn their hand over and check if the nails are straight. If they're not, I just shape them as need be. Now it's time for shaping the nail surface. I'm using my e-file and a fine sanding bit to do this. I always start at the cuticle area and then move my e-file down towards the tip. 
to achieve minimal lifting then all the part that big U that goes from side wall up to the cuticle area and down to the other side wall needs to be the thinnest part possible the transition needs to be flawless from acrylic down to nail and that way you'll find you'll get minimal lifting this requires for you to angle your e-file in such a way that you do manage to get that transition nice and flat but not to flatten the entire nail because you do need that thickness across the apex area and across the stress part of the nail to make sure the client doesn't break her nails easily. So let me know in the comments down below if you want a video specifically on how to use the e-file for shaping the nail at the end of the acrylic application. Now I'm just using my drill to clean underneath the nails and really because it's only tips I'm only filing away any fray bits that are there. After that's done I need to use a block buff to remove any excess fraying bits around the edges of the nail. So I go through and I do all the nails and clean them up that way. And then I'll be ready to apply my gel polish. My client has chosen Madame Glam's Bright Barbie Pink to paint her nails. Initially we were going to do a stamping design on her nails but at the 11th hour she changed her mind and just wanted plain nails. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint all her nails. Each nail will get two coats of colour. I'm going to cure the first layer before applying the next and then I'm going to apply Madame Glam's No Wipe Top Coat on all her nails. Once that's done I'm going to apply cuticle oil on all her cuticles and rub that in and that's her set finished. I hope you enjoyed this watch me work video and let me know in the comments if you've lost all hope in me considering the rookie mistake I made at the beginning of the video. Hopefully I'm not losing subscribers as we speak but rather this be a lesson for when we make mistakes and how to fix them without starting over. So that's all I have for you today. Please subscribe if you still have faith in me and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye! Thank you.